The same thing, either your child or your husband or your friend or your sibling, you and I will all worship the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Morning, wakey, wakey. <laughs> if there's somebody still sleeping, they're under their quilt. I want you to take the phone to your wife's ears or to your husband or to your firstborn and let them hear my voice. Wakey, wakey. Hallelujah. We're all awake in Jesus' name. And those of us in-house, well done. It's very cold, extremely cold. The weather is cold and it's even drizzling. But you made it by the grace of God. Can we give God all the praises? Thank you, Father. Thank you for making it possible for us to leave home at 6 o'clock, 6.15, 6.45. And we are here to do God's work. We are here to pray. Say to your neighbor, I'm here to pray. Now, are you a firstborn? Okay, if you're an original firstborn, I want you to raise up your hand. <laughs> original firstborn, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And those of us who are here on behalf of our children, you're not a, you're not a firstborn like that, but you're standing in the gap for your children, for his spouse, raise up your hand. Okay, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We thank you for what, how your son opens the service, the Kimbim Bofat, you can see. We give you all the glory because so shall it be in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, for the 11th year. This is our 11th year running. And by the grace of God and to the glory of the name of the Lord, we have not missed any session. Even during COVID, you made it possible. Can somebody who is grateful, somebody who has been blessed by this ministry, somebody who has seen changes in the lives of their children, put their hands together. Your children and your unborn children begin to give God praises. Father, I say thank you. 11th years and we are going on. We are marching on. We are advancing. We are breaking through in the name of Jesus. 11 years running to the glory of the name of the Lord. For the many testimonies, we say thank you, Lord. For the ones we have heard, the ones we are not aware of, and the ones that are about to come forth, we give you praises in advance. Lord, you are in charge. Our prayers are unto you. The glory belongs to you. The honor belongs to you. The credit belongs to you. It is marvelous in our eyes because it is your doing. And for this, Lord, we say a big thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, King of Glory. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name have we prayed. Amen, amen and amen. amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, the best, is, the best is yet to come. Okay, so we're going to pray for firstborns today. That's why we're here. If you're a firstborn, you're married to a firstborn, or you already have a firstborn, and if you don't have a firstborn yet, you will have a firstborn. Yeah. You will have a firstborn. You will have a firstborn. Let's look at the word of God. In the book of Luke chapter 2 verse 17. Luke 2 17. About firstborns. We know, what a, we know who a firstborn is. A firstborn is a first child. And we'll look at different things. There are different types of firstborns. So we are going to look at the different examples of firstborns. And maybe during the course of the service we may pause and take a powerful prayer song, a powerful song that's like a prayer or a prophetic song. So please, let's get ready. The Lord will help us. He will guide us in Jesus' name. Now, in Luke chapter 2 and verse 7, are you there? If you are there, if you can have it on the screen, that will be helpful as well. Please, Luke chapter 2 and verse 7. Because I want us to run fast. We have so many prayer points here. And let's see how far... Luke chapter 2, verse 7, and what does it say? It says, And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in a swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. It says here, And she brought forth her firstborn son. Whether firstborn child or firstborn daughter, 
and she brought forth her firstborn. For those of us who are trusting God, maybe you're single in the house, you're single online, you're here in the house, and you're trusting God for your firstborn. I want you to hold your hands. The way Mary held her firstborn, how would she have held him years ago? Maybe something like this. So I want you to you know, position your hands like this and say, in the name of Jesus, I shall carry my firstborn. And those of us who have firstborns, begin to pray for them as well. Those of us who have firstborns, begin to pray for your children's firstborn, that you'll have a first grandson. You'll have your own first granddaughter. Put your hands the way Mary carries Jesus in Luke chapter 2, verse 7, and begin to prophesy, begin to decree this morning, in the name of Jesus, I will carry my firstborn. You will carry your first child. The Lord will open your womb. He will bless the works of your hands. That union shall be fruitful. You shall be a fruitful vine in your husband's house. The husband shall become a father, and the mother sh and the wife shall become a mother. In the name of Jesus, just like Joseph and Mary held their firstborn son, Jesus Christ, so shall it be concerning you in the name of Jesus. You will not depart without carrying your firstborn. The Lord God Almighty will cause mercy to speak for you. Mercy will open doors. Mercy will make the impossible possible. Mercy will cancel the results of the doctors. Mercy will reduce will know, every form of reproach, every form of stigma, every form of delay. Mercy will cancel in the name of Jesus. I believe that you are praying for yourself this morning. You are praying for your unborn children. You are praying for your firstborn that is, a, that is about to emerge. In the name of Jesus, your son shall be born. Your daughter shall be born. Just like Mary held her firstborn child, so shall it be concerning you. She brought forth her firstborn son. You will bring yours forth. You will bring yours forth. In Jesus' name have we prayed. Amen. I want us to look at the book of Judges chapter 11. There's a story there about a man. There are different types of firstborns, and we're going to look at it shortly. This boy was a firstborn, but he was displaced. He was replaced. He was misplaced. But at the end of the day, he emerged. I pray that every firstborn, boy or girl, that has been replaced or that has been displaced, or has been misplaced by the grace of God, the spirit that was upon Jephthah shall rest upon such people in Jesus' name. I read from verse 1, Judges chapter 11 and verse 1. Now Jephthah the Gileadite was a mighty man of valor, and he was the son of an allot. And Gilead fathered Jephthah, and Gilead's wife bore him sons, so prior to this time, he was the only child and he was the firstborn. But later, he wanted to get married. He, he chose not to get married to the Allah, to the prostitute that gave him the son. He abandoned this woman to continue with her business. I'm not justifying it, but God will have mercy. Is anybody into prostitution? Please stop it. It's not of the Lord. It's not moral. God will give you a job with dignity, a befitting profession in Jesus' name. Prostitution is not the substitution. <clears throat> prostitution is not the alternative. Whatever it is that you're going through, some people are falling on hard times, and I think the only thing they can do is to go into prostitution. I want to encourage my sisters out there who are into prostitution, so please find a way of making your livelihood moral. Speak to the right people. I promise you that there's a job out there that is dignifying and befitting. The Lord will help us all in Jesus' name. So, he got married to his wife in verse 2. And Gilead's wife bore him sons. And his wives grew up. And they thrust Jephthah and said to him, You shall not inherit our father's house, for you are the son of a strange woman. So he was kicked out and no longer in the house. But the Bible says that he went out and he made something. He made, you know, he made a, a great thing out of himself. He did not see himself as a fugitive. He didn't see himself as an abandoned child. But he went somewhere and he worked on himself. And he was the one that they came to. They met him where he was and they said, come and be our leader. So I don't want to go into the story because of it, it's long. But let's look at verse 5. And so it came 
And so it was so that when the children of Ammonite made war against Israel, the elders of Gilead went to bring Jephthah out of the land of Tob, the firstborn that they had kicked out, the firstborn that was replaced by the firstborn of Gilead's wife. Because when the wife had her own firstborn and had her sons, after a while in the, in the, in the neighborhood they started to talk about it, that this man is the son of a prostitute. So when he was chased out, he was misplaced, he was displaced, he was kicked out. Her own son became the firstborn. But because he made a great man out of himself, he did not sit down feeling sorry for himself. He did not sit down being bitter and angry and planning retaliation against those who were wicked to him. He stood up, squared his shoulders. He became a soldier. He became a mighty man. Where he was, they found him and they were begging him to be their leader. It says in verse 6, And they said to Jephthah, Come and be a captain, that we may fight with the children of Ammon. And Jephthah said to the elders of Gilead, Did you not hate me and expel me out of my father's house? And why are you come to me now when you are in distress? And the elders of Gilead said to Jephthah, Therefore we turn again to you now, that you may go with us and fight against the children of Ammon and be our head over all the inhabitants of Jephthah. And Jephthah said to the elders of Gilead, If you bring me home again to fight with the children of Ammon, and the Lord delivered them before me, shall I be your head? And of course, they had no choice. They said yes, and he was restored. He was reinstated. I want us to lift up every firstborn that has been replaced, that has been displaced, that has been misplaced, that has been kicked out, that has been expelled, or is about to. Let us pray into their future. Whatever it is that they are planning, let the spirit of Jephthah, the spirit of God that was upon Jephthah, the spirit of diligence, the spirit of fortitude, the spirit of indomitability, the spirit of resilience, the spirit of I'm coming back, let it rest upon every firstborn. The firstborn that has, that, that, that has been kicked out, every firstborn that has been expelled, every firstborn that is not in their rightful place. The theme for today is the position of the first born. Let the position of the firstborn be reinstated. Let the position of the firstborn be restored. Let the position of the firstborn take its place. Let the position of the firstborn, let it be rearranged. Divine rearrangement, divine repositioning, divine reinstatement in the name of Jesus. Every firstborn that is going astray, every firstborn that is about to be kicked out, every firstborn that is about to be removed from their position, we pray that the Spirit of God that was upon Jephthah let it rest upon such people in Jesus' mighty name. Mighty God, have mercy. Let the mercy of God, let the mercy of God rest upon them. Let the mercy of God draw them back. Let the mercy of God reinstate them. Let the crown of the firstborn, let it be stayed, let it be replaced on them. Let the, let the crown of the firstborn be placed on them afresh. The crown, the dignity, the garments of the firstborn, the power of the firstborn, the blessing of the firstborn, like it was upon Jephthah. Let it rest upon every firstborn that has gone astray, that has been kicked out, that has been expelled, that has been taken advantage of in the name of Jesus. Restoration. Is somebody praying for restoration? Restoration upon that first child. Restoration upon that girl. Upon that first daughter. Upon that first son. Restoration. Spiritual restoration. Spiritual restoration. Physical restoration. Mental restoration. Every form of restoration. Let it rest upon this first one. It was upon Jephthah. The God of Jephthah. Let him be your God. The God of Jephthah shall be the God of that boy. The God of Jephthah shall be the God of that lady. In the name of Jesus, complete restoration, instant restoration. We say today, it will not be delayed. It shall no longer be delayed. In the name of Jesus, restoration at all cost. Restoration at all cost. Restoration by force, by force. Restoration. In Jesus' name have we prayed. Amen. God is the God of restoration. But the Bible says that when Jephthah fled from his brethren, he dwelt in a place called Tob, and there he walked on himself. He did not go down. He began to train people. He began to coach people. 
He did not let out and he didn't allow himself to be pitied. I want us to pray that such people, anybody in the place of Jephthah, where he was, can we begin to pray that they will get up, they will shake themselves off from the dust. That they will believe that there is greatness in them. The fact that they have been kicked down doesn't mean they need to remain down. The fact that they have been pushed out doesn't mean that they, rem- they, they need to remain out. The fact that they have been written off does not mean that they have to remain written off. They can write themselves in. I want you to agree with your neighbor and say, neighbor, if there is anybody you know in your life, whether it's a nephew or your son or a, a, a cousin, whoever it is, that surrounds you, a firstborn, that has gone astray, that has been expelled, that has been kicked out. I agree with you today. They will stand up. The same way Jephthah stood up. God is the God of restoration. But is that person ready to stand up? Is that, red, is that person ready to write themselves in? Is that person ready to walk on him or herself? Is that person sitting down in the dust? Is that person still feeling pity? Is that person feeling, feeling ashamed? Is that person still feeling angry? Is that person still feeling uh, thrown away and abandoned? Let that person stand up today. In the name of Jesus, Sister Betty, whoever it is that is in your life, Whether it is a sibling, whether it is a friend, whether it's a cousin, whoever it is related to you. Let such a person stand up. Let him or her stand up. Square their shoulders. The spirit that was upon Jephthah, he went into obscurity and he emerged into prominence. He went down, but he came up. He was, there was a setback. But after the setback, there was a comeback because he made himself a man of value. He made himself a man of valor. He made himself a man of of purpose he made himself a man of significance and that was why they came for him i pray that such a person would work on him or herself and they shall emerge as a victim they will not die as a victim in jesus name have we prayed amen father we say thank you to every firstborn out there to every firstborn known and unknown we pray today the god of jephthah will be your god the spirit of fortitude, the spirit of I can do it, the spirit of after a setback, there is a comeback. Let it, rep- let it rest upon such people in Jesus' name. The spirit of yes, I have been pushed down, but I refuse to remain down. Let it rest upon such people in Jesus' name. I say let every first one emerge as a victor. You will not remain as a victim. The shame of the first one will not be your portion. The glory of the first one, the honor of the first one, the blessing of the first one, let it rest upon you now and forevermore in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen and amen. Let's look at Matthew chapter 20, 20 to 21. The theme for today is what? Can somebody shout it out? Sorry? The position of the firstborn. Whether position, the crown, the honor, the position of the firstborn. Now let's look at this woman. She And this woman represents fathers as well. Because we have fathers who are passionate about the position of their children. It says, then came him, the mother of Zebedee's children. And her sons worshiping him and desiring a certain thing of him. What are you desiring of the Lord this morning? And he said unto her, What will what wilt thou? And she said unto him, Grant that these my two sons may sit, the one on thy right hand, and the other on the left in thy kingdom. This was a woman who wanted to position her children appropriately. And I believe in the Jewish culture, she would have said her two sons, let my firstborn be on the right-hand side and the left one and the secondborn on the left-hand side. What am I bringing out here? Positioning. As parents, I want us to lift up our voices and say, Lord, in your kingdom, spiritually, mentally, financially, physically, position my children, especially my firstborn. All children are important, but God, God has placed, God has placed a part, you know, something significant on the life of the firstborn. The firstborn is the first fruit. The first thing that we give, God loves it when we give him the first and not the next or the least. 
That's why God said, every firstborn, firstborns are mine, they belong to me. All children belong to God. But God singularly picked out the firstborn and said, this firstborn belongs to me. So I want us to hand our firstborns over to God. Just like this woman said, Jesus, position my children. Can we divinely position our children right now? Especially the firstborn. Mighty God, I position all my children in you. I bring out my firstborn, Ibukon Luwa. Ibukon Luwa Afolabi, I pray that, Lord, my daughter shall be positioned in you. Her rightful place, she will possess her possession. She will occupy her position. She, her position will not be taken. Ibukun, stay in the place of honor, the place of dignity, the place of the first. Just like this woman came to Jesus, I bring my firstborn to Jesus. I bring my firstborn to God. I bring my firstborn to the Holy Spirit. I say, Bukonua, I know you are awake right now. And you are praying, you have logged on. I say, let the spirits of God overwhelm you. Let the spirits of God preserve you. Let the spirits of God keep you where you should be. In the spiritual realm, physically, mentally, financially, ministerially. In every area of your life. Mighty God, I thank you. The mercies of the Lord will continue to preserve you and you shall remain intact. Your position will not diminish. Your position will not be taken. Your position shall remain intact by the mercies of God and by the power of God. Father, we say thank you. In Jesus' name have we prayed. Amen. Now the first one. Let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 21. Deuteronomy chapter 21 and verse 15. What does it say about the firstborn? Am I going to pray? The Lord God is helping us. I can see a shift in the spiritual realm. I can see things happening. I can see firstborns who were about to go astray. But by virtue of today's prayer meeting, the hand of the Lord is pulling them back. I can see the merciful hand of God pulling them back. I can see the gracious hand of God putting them down. Stay in them and say, no, you're not going. I can hear mercy say no. Mercy is saying no. Mercy is saying no. Say to your neighbor today, mercy is saying no. Mercy is saying no to your firstborn being replaced. Mercy is saying no to your firstborn being uprooted. Mercy is saying no to your firstborn being rejected. Mercy is saying no. Mercy is opposing the plans of the enemy. Mercy is standing against the plans of the enemy. Mercy is standing against the agenda of the evil one. Mercy is saying no. Mercy. 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 The mercies of the Lord is opposing every plan of the enemy over your children, your firstborn, every firstborn, male and female. Mercy is saying no. Father, we say thank you. Receive all the glory. Receive all the honor. In Jesus' mighty name have we prayed. Deuteronomy chapter 21 and verse 15. It says there, if, we're not saying a man should have two wives. It says, if a man have two wives, one beloved and another hated, and they have borne him children, so Sharon has given Jason, I shouldn't use Jason again. What's the other name I should use? Jason, then when Jason came to church, give me a name, Richard. When the Richard will come in as well. So Sharon has given Richard a son. And the other one, Barbara, has also given Richard a son. But for one reason, Richard loves the son of Barbara, who is his second wife. And hates the son of the first wife. The Bible says that if a man have two wives, one beloved and another hated, why should any man marry a man he does not love anyway? I don't know, but it can happen. And they have borne him children, both the beloved and the hated. And if the firstborn son of hers that was hated, sorry, both, so let me start again, apologies. Verse 15, if a man have two wives, one beloved and another hated. And they have borne him children, both the beloved and the hated. And if the firstborn son be hers that was hated, then it shall be when he makes his son to inherit that which he has, that he may not make the son of the beloved firstborn 
before the son of the hated, which is indeed the firstborn. But he shall acknowledge the son of the hated for the firstborn by giving him a double portion of all that he has. For he is the beginning of his strength. The right of the firstborn is his. And the same goes to men who had a firstborn when they were in secondary school in the village. And they've now relocated to the United Kingdom. And they've married this British citizen. And this British citizen has given them children with the British accent. And they've forgotten the firstborn in the village that is hawking eggs and hawking, uh, what's it called? Cold water, pure water. The Bible is saying that you may not have liked that lady. Maybe it was just a one night stand and you hate her. You hate the way she speaks and you, don't just, you just don't like her. God is saying that when the time comes and you're about to write your will, that boy selling pure water, that is your firstborn, he deserves his right, double portion. Yes, so if there's a man next to you say, hmm, maybe you need to repent, but I know you're not like that. You don't have one, one boy selling pure water in the village. But that's what the Bible says. Can we read it again? Let's go to verse 15. Let me read it from the screen. Let me read it from um, any version apart from KJV. A pure, uh, maybe good news. Okay, I have good news here. If you can have good news or amplified so we can understand this. Because when I was studying this, God said, emphasize this. Some people think it doesn't matter. that uh, Just be sending him 20 pounds every month. That would be okay. It's more than sending him 20 pounds. We must face up to the, uh, the, we must face the consequences of our actions. That boy is selling pure water in the village. He's your firstborn. He is the beginning. The Bible says the beginning of your strength. And the right of the firstborn is his. So we can't pick and choose what we want to believe in the Bible. Okay, thank you for this version. It says, if a man has two wives, one loved and the other disliked, and they both have borne him children, and if the firstborn is a son of the one who is disliked, carry on, then on the day when he wields his possession to his sons, and please, we don't need to be old before we write our wills. You don't have to be 90 years old. You can write your wills and it can always be updated. So write your will, you're 40, you're 50, you're 60, put a will together. Then on the day when he wills his possessions to his sons, he shall not put the firstborn of his loved wife in place of the actual firstborn of the disliked wife. Her firstborn being older, and verse 17, but he shall acknowledge the son of the disliked as what? As the firstborn, by giving him what? A double portion of all that he has. For he was the first, what? Issue of his strength. The right of the firstborn is his. So if your husband has married you and he married you, he said, I have a son, I have a daughter. And you say, no, 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 no. That's your past. That's your past. You are a partaker of his sins. So when you get home today, sit down and say, honey, babes, that uh, sikiratsu, that moshud that you had 32 years ago, based on what pastor said today at that meeting, I don't want to be a partaker of your sins. You may not have liked the lady, but whether you liked her or not, she has given you a son, and the son is your firstborn. So let us do what is right. Let us include him. In this will that you're putting together, that is the right thing to do. Do your own and leave the rest to God. Can we begin to pray? Every forgotten firstborn, every abandoned firstborn, every firstborn that has been abandoned, and the wife and the son, and the wife and the husband are partakers of this sin that we have just read. We pray for mercy, we pray for wisdom, we pray for guidance in the name of Jesus. We pray, Jehovah God, that every firstborn that is lodging around, every firstborn that is walking on streets like a beggar, 
every firstborn that should have been embraced and honored, let such be remembered in Jesus' name. Lord, as we are praying for remembrance from God, let whoever it is that is in this situation remember and reach out to that firstborn that is going about like a beggar, going about like an orphan in the name of Jesus. We pray, Jehovah, for wisdom. Even as families will be sitting together, husbands and wife, the wife that had a firstborn and don't got married, didn't tell the husband about the child growing up in the village with a grandmother or abandoned or gave up for adoption. We say every firstborn. Let every firstborn, the dignity of the firstborn be, re, be preserved. Let it be, inter, let it be, let it be remembered today. Let the firstborn that has been rejected and forgotten due to legitimate reasons, due to illegitimate reasons, we pray that such a firstborn shall emerge and be reinstated in the name of Jesus. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. He who wants mercy must show mercy. One of the ways to obtain mercy is by releasing mercy. Lord, we show mercy to that firstborn. That firstborn. That firstborn that nobody knows about. We pray for mercy. We pray for mercy. As I reach out to that child, that daughter, that son, I shall be reached out to as well. But as I remember that child, I shall also be remembered. Mighty God, have mercy. I will not be a partaker of any man's sins. I will not prevent any firstborn from not receiving their inheritance. I will not stand against the good of anybody. I hope you are praying today. We are praying for the firstborns all over the world. In Egypt, in Nigeria, in Ghana, in Gambia, in United Kingdom, whoever they are, wherever they may be. Let us intercede on their behalf that this one shall be remembered. It is not their, it is not their fault that they were born out of wedlock. It is it is not their fault that they were a result of a one night stand. It is not their fault that they were a result of a fling. It was not their fault. They just found themselves here on earth. Can we pray for them today? Can we stand in the gap for them? Can we intercede on their behalf that this one shall be remembered? This one shall be reinstated. This one shall be rewarded. This one shall be dignified. This one shall be settled. They will not wander about in darkness. They will not grow up about like beggars. Mighty God, have mercy. Wherever they they may be in the village, in the towns, in the cities, in the countries. Mighty God, have mercy. Let these ones be remembered. Lord, reach out and let remembrance, divine remembrance, be their portion and divine repositioning. Let it rest upon them today in the name of Jesus. Let there be honesty in marriages. Let there be honesty and transparency. Let there be good communication. Mighty God, we pray that everything will fall to place. They will align shall fall unto them in pleasant places. They shall be remembered and all shall be well. In Jesus' name have we prayed. Amen. Amen. That topic is a very sensitive one. It's very sensitive. If you've been married for 26 years and you now have to sit your wife down and say, honey, uh, actually I've just remembered. I inconveniently forgot that I have a son I don't know, before I got married to you. It's very sensitive. So please, Seek wisdom. Seek wisdom. Don't just rush into it. Apply wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. Because it entails a lot of things. Having to break the news to your wife, to your in-laws, to your children, your daughter or your son. Who thought that all along they were the firstborn. Only to find out that they are not the firstborn. That there was somebody somewhere. So please let's pray. If you want to discuss with me or any senior pastor, please by all means Let's discuss it. Don't just rush into it. Can somebody say amen? amen? Okay, let's carry on. Firstborn. The firstborn is the eldest child. The firstborn is the womb opener. The firstborn is the door opener. The firstborn is the status changer. The firstborn is the reproach remover. Can you imagine getting married? First year, no children. Second year, no children. And the third year, you get pregnant. That first one has removed the reproach, the stigma, all the talk in the neighborhood. The first one is a flag bearer. The first one is your might and the beginner of your strength. The first one is the excellency of dignity and the excellency of power. The first one is a primary heir. The primary heir is the firstborn. The firstborn is important. Let's look at Exodus chapter 13 verse 2. What does God say about the firstborn? Exodus chapter 13 and verse 2. It says, Sanctify unto me all the firstborn. Whatsoever openeth the womb, among the children of Israel, both of man and of beast, is mine. 
can we just say, God, if you are if you are in the if you are at home, why not go to the bedroom of your firstborn and say I, and hold his or her hand and say, I hand you over to God again. You belong to God. And if you don't have your firstborn here in the house, can you just you know raise up, raise up your hand and say prophetically, I raise my firstborn up unto you. Ibukum belongs to you. I'm simply a caretaker. I'm simply a take. I'm simply a caretaker. I don't know anything. You are the parents of all parents. Receive my daughter. Receive my son. Receive my unborn child. You are trusting God for children. You are still single. Say, so God, receive my firstborn. Like we prayed earlier on Luke chapter 2 verse 7, you will carry your firstborn as well. Ipoko is yours. Mention the name of your firstborn and say you belong to God. If your firstborn has deviated and is seven foreign gods, if your firstborn doesn't come to church, if your firstborn is not yet born again, if your firstborn doesn't like the things of the Lord, begin to say, today I decree and I prophesy you belong to God. Can I have a partner? Turn to your partner. In the name of Jesus, your firstborn, Sister Betty Ogolua, your firstborn's name is Ogolua. Ogolua belongs to God. Ibukolua belongs to God. That is what God has said. Ogolua belongs to God. Ibukolua belongs to God. You belong to Jesus. In him will you live and move and have your being. Your life is hid in Christ. You are not going anywhere. The mark of Jesus is upon you. The mark of God is upon you. So nobody will trouble you. Because you bear upon your body the mark of our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, Golua, the hand of God is upon you. The power of God is upon you. The mercy of God is upon you. Your name is written in the book of life. Your name is written in the book of life. Oh, Golua, Ibukolua, so shall it be in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now we're going to pray the different types of firstborns. We have the firstborn. We have the firstborn by birth. Um, I, my, I pray today that every firstborn by birth shall remain a firstborn in the name of Jesus. We have another type of firstborn. And this is the firstborn by wealth. What do I mean by this? The firstborn is there. The secondborn is there. The thirdborn, the fourthborn. But when it comes to putting a project together for daddy and mommy, the firstborn is always telling stories. Oh, I will come back to you. Somebody owes me money. When they return the money, I will contribute. Oh, don't worry. My check bounced. Oh, my card is not working. Oh, the bank has closed down. Oh, somebody jutes me. I'll come back. I'll come back. Then the fourthborn will say, it's okay. Enough of this talk. And just put the money down. After a while, the builders and the contractors and the parents will begin to relate to the firstborn because of his wealth. So we have the firstborn by wealth. But we are going to pray today that by wealth, I will not lose my position. Because as the firstborn, I will have what it takes. And all my siblings, by the grace of God, they will also be wealthy. But when it comes to donation, when it comes to donation, when it comes to putting finances down, I'll give, I'll, 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 I'll triple them in the name of Jesus. Can we pray now? Say, neighbor, in the name of Jesus, your birthright will not be taken away from you because of lack of wealth. The, bo the, bo the child that becomes the firstborn by wealth, that will not be your experience in Jesus. Then begin to pray for your neighbor. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you as a firstborn. That child that becomes the firstborn by wealth, that will not be your portion in Jesus' name. You will not experience it. When it comes to wealth, your position will not be taken. You will have what it takes. When it comes to donating, when it comes to contributing, when it comes to uh, financing the project, you will put your hand in your pocket and you will have what it takes to silence them in the name of Jesus. Mighty God, I thank you. God will bless you with prosperity. He will bless you with riches. He will bless you with open doors. You will not, you will not be a borrower. You will not be a borrower to your siblings as a firstborn. The position of the firstborn, it is an ability 
separation when the firstborn becomes a borrower to the siblings you shall be a lender you will be a giver you will be a supplier you will be a provider as the firstborn you will be in your place you will not be taken away you will not be relegated thank you mighty father in Jesus name have we prayed amen there is also another firstborn the firstborn by death there are some people that say, I'm a firstborn. They say, but actually, I used to have a big brother. And then the brother, something happened, and that's why. We don't want such occurrences in our homes in Jesus' name. I want you to turn to another neighbor. And say, the firstborn that becomes firstborn by death will not be your experience in Jesus' name. As a firstborn, you will not die. Your position will not be taken. You will live long. The hand of the Lord will preserve you. The hand of the Lord will protect you. The hand of the Lord will preserve you. The hand of the Lord will strengthen your life. He will number you, will number your days and apply your heart to wisdom. God will give you long life. The firstborn by death will not be experienced in your family in the name of Jesus. Father, we say thank you. In Jesus' name have we prayed. Amen. Let's look at the word of God. In 1 Samuel chapter 14 and verse 49. 1 Samuel 14, 49. There's a lady who was a firstborn, but she died. And when she died, her sister had to raise her children. And her sister became, you know, took her place. That will not be a portion in Jesus' name. It says, now the sons of Saul were Jonathan and Ishua and Malshua. And the names of his two daughters were these. The name of the firstborn was what? Merab. And the name of the younger was Michael. So what happened to Merab? Merab eventually died. Let's look at 2 Samuel 2, 21, 8. 2 Samuel chapter 21 and verse 8. When Merab died, now, the, okay, when Merab died, 2 Samuel chapter 21 and verse 8. But the children, but the king took the two sons of Rizba, the daughter of Aya, whom she bare unto Saul, Ammoni, and Mephibosheth. And the five sons, listen to this, and the five sons of Michael, the daughter of Saul, whom she brought up for Israel, the son of Basilia, the Meholath. Now his daughter called Merab, his first daughter, she got married to a man called Adrel. And when she died, you know Michael that never had children for Saul because who did she marry? Who, she never had children for David because she mocked David. So she died barren. So when she was still living, but Merab, her sister, died and Michael had to raise up her children for Israel. And the five sons of Michael, the daughter of Saul, whom she brought up for Israel. So I want us to pray today. That in the name of Jesus, the firstborn by death will not be my experience in Jesus' name. My sister will have her children. I will have my children. We'll all raise our children together. And we'll grow old and die at an old age in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray that your brother will not have to raise your children. That your sister will not have to raise your children at, an, no, at, at a young age in the name of Jesus. When it is old, by the time they are all old, they too would have become grown parents they would have become parents and there would be no need for them to be raised but Merab died and her children were young and Michael had to raise her children she was the first daughter begin to pray today as the first daughter as the firstborn position not my position shall remain intact the king of glory will help me I will live long I will not be on the bed of affliction Merab died and she could not do anything with her children and so somebody else her sister raised her sons up for her that will not be my portion in jesus name my sister will live long my brother will live long i shall live long we shall raise our children and we shall take them to the place where they'll be able to stand for themselves when they also become parents we will see we'll see them to the place of dignity the place of the stability by the power of god my children shall become parents in my lifetime my children shall become grandparents in my lifetime in Jesus name have we prayed amen. amen amen there's also the firstborn by transaction let's look at Genesis Genesis chapter 27 sorry Genesis chapter 25 
chapter 25, the firstborn by transaction, you are the firstborn. You know you are the firstborn. You know the, you understand the blessings of the firstborn, the honor of the firstborn. And you now sold your birthright. You despised your birthright. You know what it means. You know the significance of it. But you gave it away. Over what? So let's look at Genesis chapter. Have I mentioned the, the verse? Okay, Genesis chapter 25, chapter 25, okay, and verses 29, verse 29 to 34. 25, and let's look at verse 29. First, firstborn by transaction. So if you are that person, you say, oh, I'm the firstborn, but actually I bought it. Firstborn shouldn't be bought. That, that right should not be bought. And as a sibling, it should never be, you know, the sibling that is interested in your birthright is an evil sibling. The sibling that will say, I'm happy to allow you to play with my Xbox. I'm happy to lend you my car on the condition that you sell me your firstborn right is a bad sibling. And we don't have such siblings in the house in Jesus' name. And I thank God for my sister. So many times, inadvertently, my mother will say some things. And my sister will say, or oh, auntie, and she oh, no, and she'll refer to me. Because <clears throat> I was I was very when it comes to housework, I was very, very good. I won't say the opposite. But my sister was very good when it comes to housework. She would roll up her sleeves and she would carry the crates of Coca-Cola, carry the, carry everything. And I'm somewhere reading James Hadley Chase in my bedroom. So she would always say, okay, Kemi, you do this, you Kemi. And my mom and my sister would say, no, auntie, uh, let me go and call auntie. This is auntie, this, it should be auntie. And mom would say, okay, uh, go and call your sister. So I thank God for siblings like that. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, on the day that you are hungry like Esau, on the day that you are desperate for something, your younger, your sibling will not take on due advantage of you. Your brother or your sister will not be an opportunist. They will not be interested in your birthright. They will help you preserve it in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray for your neighbor. In the name of Jesus, neighbor, I pray for you. That your younger ones will never ever be interested in your birthright. They will help you to preserve it. They will help you to maintain it. They will not take undue advantage of you. When you are vulnerable, they will not strike. When you are weak, they will not hit you. They will not reduce you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' name have we prayed. Also pray for another neighbor because in all of this that we are saying, we can say that Jacob was an opportunist and Esau lacked self-control. But the third side of the story is that God had also ordained it. That the, el that the elder will serve the younger. There are always three sides to a coin. When that incident happened in the neighborhood, they would have said, Ah-ah, uh -uh, Esau, you are greedy. Ah-ah, uh -uh, how could you have just sold it over food? Couldn't you have gone to McDonald's or somewhere to buy something fast? Did you have to? Ah-ah, uh -uh, don't you know what it means? And another group would have said, Jacob, you are an opportunist. Your big brother. Why would you tell him to sell him, to sell you his birthright? Couldn't you have given him the food for free? Or ask for his latest trainers? Ah, uh ah, -uh, Jacob. But the other side, when you look at a coin, we have the head, we have the tail, and we have the edges. The edges is what people don't look at. The God factor, the third side of the story was that God has said, Esau have I hated, and Jacob have I loved. And when two nations were fighting in their mother's womb, God said, the elder shall serve the young. I want us to pray, so just pray for mercy that God concerning my children, if this is spiritual, the spiritual attack over firstborn, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy over Ibuku Oluwa. Have mercy upon Dami Bakare. In the name of Jesus, whatever it is, Lord, if you are the one behind this, Lord, have mercy. Lord, dignify my firstborn. 
keep my firstborn. Preserve the honor and the dignity of my firstborn. The garments of my firstborn will not be removed. The crown of your firstborn, Dami Lola Bakari, your crown will not be removed. By the power of God and by the grace of God, your crown shall remain intact on your head. The crown that God has placed upon your head will not be removed. Lord, have mercy. Your siblings will not be interested in your birthright. I pray for you, Dami today, are you and Tony will never be interested in your birthright. They will help you to preserve it in Jesus' name. I pray today, if Lua and Anodua and Daniel, you will never be interested in the Buku's birthright. You will help her preserve it. You will stay on your lane and my firstborn will shine as a firstborn in the name of Jesus. Father, we say thank you. Be highly exalted. In Jesus' name have we prayed. Amen. Let's look at the word of God in Genesis chapter 25 and from, let's look at verse 27. And the boys grew and Esau was a cunning hunter and Jacob a plain man. He was a simple man, but how did this idea, how did it enter into his head? If the Bible is calling him plain, what type of plainness is that? <laughs> anyway, we'll ask God when we get to heaven. And Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. And, Esau, and Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Again, when one parent, and you make it so obvious, that's for another day. And Jacob sought, and Jacob sought pottage, and Esau came from the field, and he was faint. And Esau said to Jacob, feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, that thing that I'm seeing. Ah, it's entering my eyes. It's sweetening me. My, I'm salivating. I must have this food. I pray thee with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. And Jacob said, Sell me this day thy birthright. And Esau said, Behold, I'm at the point of die. I'm, I'm, I'm at the point to die. And what profit shall this birthright do to me? And Jacob said, Swear to me this day. And he swore unto him and sold his birthright unto Jacob. Some people say he stole it. He didn't steal it. He sold it. It was good business. He was sitting in his house and business came to him. He offered it a transaction. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils. And he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. And three hours later, I went to the toilet to push it out. But the birthright had already been handed over. Thus, Esau despised his birthright. We have firstborns by transaction. That is not what we want today. Turn to another neighbor and say, neighbor, in the name of Jesus, that which the Lord has given to you, you will not despise it. You will cherish it. You will nurture it. You will nourish it. You will appreciate it. You will celebrate it. You will walk in it in the name of Jesus. You will not give it up. You will not give it over. You will not, trans you will not hand it in over anything. Nothing is worth it. No prize is worth it. By the grace of God, the spirit that was upon Esau, the spirit that was upon Jacob, let it be far from my children in the name of Jesus. Father, I say thank you. Make sure you are praying for your neighbor. He said, of what profit is it? Help me, Lord. Help our children. In Jesus' name have we prayed. Amen. Also on this Although it's not about firstborn, but it's about patterns. You know, when, Esau, when Isaac was going to die, he said, oh, can you prepare food? I'm about to die. He didn't die until many, 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 many years later. This thing about food, Isaac, give me food, give me food, venison, venison, I want to bless, I want to bless. About food. Esau too, food, 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 food. Can we pray that every evil pattern that wants to rest upon me, I forbid, I reject, I cast it out, the blood of Jesus. I erase it today. I say no. Every evil pattern, genetically, spiritually, I've seen in the life of my father, in the life of my uncle, in the life of my, father, my, my, my mother, in the life of her sisters that wants to rest upon me, upon my children, upon my firstborn, I come against it. Isaac wanted food. 
He said, give me food so that I can bless my children. Esau too said, food, food, food. Begin to oppose, begin to reject. In the name of Jesus, every satanic pattern, every evil pattern, every demonic pattern, every evil orchestration that wants to land on me or that I'm already seeing, I forbid, I put, I cancel in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name have we prayed. Also about pattern, let me quickly say this as well. Although it hasn't got to do with firstborn, but we can pray it. It says in Genesis 27 verse 1. Genesis 27 verse 1. It says the eyes of, is- of Isaac were dim. Then when we look at Genesis chapter 48 verse 10. It says, Genesis 48 verse 10. That the eyes of Israel, who is Jacob, his eyes were also dim. Somebody said age. But, sorry? Age. Okay. Age. But now let's look at Deut- uh, the book of Deuteronomy chapter 34 and verses 7 and 8. Thank you, sir, that you said age. Do you know that my father died at the age of 89 and he read, until the point he died, he never read anything with glasses on. When I went home some weeks ago, my mother at the age of 85, she was reading her Bible without glasses. I said, hey, look, where, where did you get this from? So I'm praying now that maybe somewhere in my great, 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 and it has now landed on me. I'm praying for my children that they'll be old. It says, and Moses was 120 years old. When he died, his eyes was not dim. His eye was not dim. Isaac's eyes got dim. Jacob, dim. Moses, so you don't have to be old and have dimmed eyes. So this is a pattern. It was in the life of Isaac and it landed also on Jacob. Can we begin to pray? The food thing as well, about food upon Isaac and landed on Esau. Not being able to apply self-control. Can we begin to pray today? Every evil pattern in my family, every evil pattern in my genetics, every in my genes, every evil pattern that wants to rest on me spiritually, every evil pattern, let it not pass over to my children. Let it end here. By the grace of God, by the blood of Jesus, by the power of God, by the power that raised Christ up from the dead. Let it end here in Jesus' name. I forbid, I cancel, I declare null and void. Every evil pattern that I have seen, every evil pattern that I'm yet to discover in my husband's house, in my wife's house, let it come to an end today. It will not be replicated in the lives of my children. I will not say, ah, this is familiar. Every plan of the evil one to cause this evil pattern to be perpetuated, I bring it to an end today in jesus name have we prayed amen in jesus name have we prayed hallelujah let's continue to pray another one we've looked at firstborn by trans let's look at firstborn by sickness the firstborn is alive the firstborn is alive and kicking but mentally unable mentally unable to make decisions by virtue of mental illness and people will say, oh, I'm the firstborn, but I have a firstborn somewhere in a care home. He's severely disabled. He's autistic. Oh, he's in pains and he can't make decisions. We are going to forbid it in Jesus' name. That that type of firstborn that, less, that will rest upon another sibling because of sickness, begin to reject it. That as a firstborn, I will not be on the bed of affliction. I shall be mentally sound. I shall be mentally upright. I will know how to make decisions. I will not be indecisive. Disability, any form of sickness will not prevent me from carrying out my role as a firstborn in the name of Jesus. Firstborn by sickness. We forbid it and we come against it. The type of long-term sickness that causes the firstborn to be in the valley of obscurity begin to forbid it in Jesus' name. The type of sickness that causes a firstborn to be seen and not to be heard, I want us to come against it. You shall be seen and you shall be heard. You shall fully participate. You will make decisions. You will call the shots in Jesus' name. You will call the shots. You will not be abandoned. You will not be on the bed of affliction. You will not be tied down by the grace of God. You shall be mentally alive, mentally alert, mentally awake, mentally sound in Jesus' name. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, 
another neighbor in the name of Jesus. I pray for you as a firstborn. I pray for your child as a firstborn. I pray for your spouse as a firstborn. That you will occupy your place. Divine repositioning. You shall be mentally sound. Mentally alert. Mentally awake. Mentally alive. To play the role of the firstborn. In the land of the living. You shall be seen. And you shall be heard. In Jesus mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Time is going. I think we may have to continue this next month. And one of the things God told me this morning in the bathroom, God said he wants all the firstborns to be consecrated. I said, God, how can they be consecrated? They can't come to church very early at, uh, uh, on, on, the morning, on Sunday morning at 7.30. Some are online. How do we do it? And, it just, and I just dismissed it. I said, then it came back again. Anyway, the conclusion is that the firstborns will be consecrated on Friday, the vigil day. The time will be at 7. The time will be at 7 for those who can make it. And please, I implore you. I've ne in, in, in my 11 years of taking prayers for firstborns, God has never said, consecrate them unto me. And when God speaks like this, I know when it is God. I know that God is about to prevent some things. But for that prevention to take place, some things must take place. So please, on Friday, this Friday, the vigil Friday, instead of another day, on the vigil Friday at 7 o'clock, we are going to do it before the vigil. We're going to consecrate all firstborns, holy communion and anointing and powerful prayers. Every firstborn. If your firstborn is abroad, come with a photograph or come with a point of contact, a handkerchief or whatever it is that you feel led. But on Friday, we're going to pray for all first, original firstborns. We're not standing in the gap. If you want to stand in the gap, then let it be on the altar, either a handkerchief or a photograph. But the human beings that are going to be consecrated are going to be firstborn, authentic firstborns by the grace of God. Can you turn to your neighbor and say amen? amen. So if your firstborn is abroad, it's okay. Come with your photograph or a handkerchief. Don't come and stand physically in the gap for them. That's what the Lord has laid on my heart. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Let's take one more, then we'll close. And we'll close with a song. And we'll, we will take our offering and with a song and we'll close. Firstborn by divine arrangement. Let's look at Numbers chapter 3. Numbers chapter 3. The prayer of the firstborns can't end. We know so many things about Cain and Abel, Ishmael and Isaac, Jacob and Esau, so many. But let's look at, as we conclude this morning, numbers. Now, this was God. God said, I am going to remove these people. And this is the person I now want as my firstborn. Let's look at numbers chapter 3. And we're going to look at verses 11 and 12. Numbers chapter 3, verses 11 and 12. It says here, and the Lord spoke to Moses saying, and the Lord spoke to Moses saying, and I, behold, I have taken the Levites from among the children of Israel instead of all the firstborn that opened the matrix, the womb, among the children of Israel. Therefore, the Levites shall be mine. God is sovereign. He can reposition anybody. And that was what he did concerning the Levites. Now, the good question to ask is, what on earth did the Levites do? For God to have abandoned everybody else and chosen the Levites to be his firstborn. We'll look at the word of God. Before we go to the reason why that happened, let's look at verse 45 of the same chapter. Verse 45 of the same chapter. What does it say? God said, take the Levites instead of all the firstborn among the children of Israel and the cattle of the Levites instead of the cattle and the Levites shall be mine. I am the Lord. God said it again in the same chapter. Now let's look at Exodus chapter 32. Exodus chapter 32. And let's look at verses 26 and 28. Exodus 32 Verses 26 to 28. God is sovereign and nobody can question him. Now when Moses went up to God for the Ten Commandments, the children of God 
were getting restless and they wanted to worship something. They spoke to Aaron. Aaron asked them to bring out their earrings and they made a golden calf and they were worshiping this golden calf. Moses came down with the Ten Commandments. He was so angry. He shattered it to pieces. He punished them and he said something. He was angry because of what they had done. Then Moses stood in the gates of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. Not the tribe of Reuben or the tribe of Gadite or the tribe of Zebulon or the tribe of, you know, it was the tribe of, or the tribe of Issachar. It was the tribe of Levi. The Levites stood by him. And because of what they did, God said, ah, I'm going to reposition you. For this prayer point, I want us to pray in tongues because it's beyond human understanding. Why them? Why not another? Why didn't God say, okay, it's okay. Why didn't God reward them differently? Why did God choose to reposition them and say, they are now my first for the Levites and this is what they are going to be doing. So can we pray in tongues? Can we pray in the spirit? Ye kero boshente, ye kero boboki raba, ye bara mama ketero boshke, pambara mama kekero boshkente, oro bobokuri a mama kero boshkente, ye kero boya masse, ye kiri a baba kero bobo, ye kero boshente robobo, ye kiri a mama kero boshente, ye kero boboya mama kero bo, ara mama keri a mama kero boshinte, ye kiri a makira ma us siri a ma us kanta la baba, ye kira ma ura ma ketero boshente. Bamba rama ira makete robo bo Yeke robo shkente O robo ya mama Yeke robo kida mama kente Yeke robo shkente Yeke robo bo Yema kere abashente robo bo Bamba rama makere ya mama Yeke robo shkente Yikiri ya mama Eke la baba kente, orobo ya masente, eke robo boshi, baba la maba kete, orobo bokuri ya mama kente, eke robo, eke robo shkente, eke robo shente, eke robo bo iri ya mama kete, eke la masente robo bo, eke robo shkente robo bo, eke robo bo ya mama, eke robo bo shente. In Jesus' name have we prayed. Lord, we thank you. You are a good God and there is none besides thee. Why you chose the Levites, nobody can question you. But there was something they did. And you reward loyalty. You reward faithfulness. We pray, mighty Father, that all our firstborns shall be found to be loyal to you. They shall be on the Lord's side. Turn to your neighbor and say, your first one shall be on the side of the Lord. Your first one will not be against God. Your first one shall serve God. Your first one shall test after God. As a deer spans after the waters, so shall your first one test after God. In the name of Jesus, your first one will be a good example. And the siblings will follow their footsteps. In the name of Jesus, they will be on the Lord's side. They will not be against God. They will not be antichrist. They will not stand against the gospel. They will stand for Jesus. They will stand for the Holy Spirit. They will stand for the things of the Lord. Your firstborn shall follow you to church. Your firstborn shall know God for himself. Your firstborn shall know God for herself. Your firstborn shall have a relationship with Jesus. Your firstborn shall come to the knowledge of God. Your firstborn shall accept Jesus Christ into her life as a Lord and personal Savior in Jesus mighty name. With your firstborn all shall be well. Thank you mighty God. We give you all the glory and we give you all the honor. We thank you, Lord, for our firstborns today. Can you raise your hands up unto God? And say, God, as, as I continue next month, next month, the third Sunday next month, we are going to pray firstborn prayers part two. There are so many more. The garments of the firstborn, the voice of the firstborn. We've not even touched the voice of the firstborn. For some people, the voice of the firstborn stinks. We are going to pray that the voices of the firstborn will be strong and be hacking to in Jesus' name. So please, next month, third Sunday of the month. But today we want to thank God for what we have done in the spiritual realm. There's a shift. Say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you. So shall it be in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Repositioning the firstborn. 
In Jesus' name have we prayed.